and welcome everybody. It's indeed a great pleasure that all of you have turned up for this training. It does mean a lot, you know, for us for fighting against oppression, for fighting against occupation. It does mean a lot that people like you have come here to show solidarity with us. Uh, it goes in a long way. It helps us, you know, to keep fighting against oppression. It gives us strength. It gives us courage. So today we have, we are fortunate enough today that we have with us Parvina Angarji. She is the she is the head of association of parents of disappeared people in Kashmir. She co-founded the organization in 1994, four years after her son Javed Ahmed Ahangar was arrested by the Indian Army and was, and was disappeared. Since then, she has mobilized hundreds of families to protest, hunger strike, demonstrate sit-ins, and demand the whereabouts of the vanished loved ones. She was nominated for Nobel Peace Prize in 2005. In 2008, she petitioned the United Nations Working Group on involuntary and enforced disappearances to impress upon India the need to repeal laws that enable impunity in Jammu and Kashmir. She is known as the Iron Lady of Kashmir for her dedicated quest for justice. Thank you so much for coming. We have with us today Ifat Fatima Ji as well. Ifat Fatima Ji is an independent documentary maker from Kashmir. Her films in include Lanka, The Other Side of War and Peace, that was made uh, regarding the conflict in Sri Lanka. And then Kesa Saga was another story about Ladakh. And then in the realms of visual, on one of the India's top artists, Dashrat Patel, this was another documentary she made. And she again made a series of documentaries on Amir Khusro, who was the 16th century Persian poet. Um, in 2010, she completed a video installation, Ethnography of a European City, Conversations in Salzburg, which questions some of the East-West polarity, or you may say some of the East-West dichotomy. It's another way of how an Eastern person, how Eastern people, they look at the Western world. So she may, now the screening of this movie, which we are going to see in a short while from now, uh, it has been already screened at the University of Westminster, then they went to Swaz, then Oxford, then Warwick, Birmingham, and after this they'll be going to Cambridge as well. Thank you so much for coming. So if you can please speak a few words. It's a pleasure to be here. I just briefly want to just uh, the idea about the film, actually the film is on the issue of enforced disappearances and enforced disappearances is a crime in international law under which people are uh, forcibly arrested without, uh, by mostly by state or forces allied to the state and after they have been arrested they deny that they have been arrested. So there is absolutely no uh, knowledge or information about their whereabouts and it is a very, very traumatic uh, experience for the families who cannot possibly give up their struggle and their demand for information and about their loved ones and the, their quest for justice and struggle sort of continues. In Kashmir, enforced disappearances has been practiced quite severely, especially in the early 90s and uh, early 2000, that time period. And uh, informally, the, it is reported that there are probably 8 to 10,000 10, people who have been disappeared. And uh, there is no knowledge of what has been done to them. So this um, struggle is, there is a movement in Kashmir against enforced disappearances which we have by Meena Ji with us, she sort of leads that movement against enforced disappearances. And just sort of to add this, uh, the issue of enforced disappearances is not peculiar to Kashmir. It's a practice which is um, sort of throughout the world. States practice it. It's a weapon of um, 
It's a strategy to terrorize people into submission. So wherever there is dissent, it is used to uh, terrorize people into submission. And this film took about nine years to make. I started working on it in 2006. And during these years, I have been involved with the families and I have been working with the families. So um, the film is a product of this long-term work with the families. So I hope after seeing the film, we can have a discussion. That would be nice. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's a very crucial question to ask. Why people are disobeyed? I think uh, at the very beginning I said that enforced disobedience is a weapon. It's like a weapon of war. Yeah. People use the states generally, they use it as a strategy to terrorize people so that there is no dissent to it's a, it's a weapon of war for, to terrorize people into submission. Yeah. So in Kashmir, there, is, there has been a movement for self-determination. So people have been demanding their political rights. So in order to suppress them, they have, there is tremendous repression and uh, enforced disappearances is one of the methods for that. Can we ask for an energy concept as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should have the sound of the local guys from the area, and the separate guys from the local. In our Kaskara, that we invited, we were looking to work at the Mother in our Dasa city, Lava Dasa. Our lady, yes, a very tough person, general reason. That one will need to look clear from the guy at some point. In the back guys, we should have the sound of the sound of the sound of the sound of the sound. It should get it to it should it should sort of problem cash me that much. It should um problem cash me that much. That is my own party shape to that much. That is why it is my own that. It should work that way. She is saying that it has been long that Indian state has been doing this, and this is one of the strongest weapons that India has in Kashmir. Like it it gives a lot of pain to people, not only to the family, but you know in the larger context, if you see to the society as well. So it's one of the weapons, you know, how to keep keep people subjugated. Right. Can any other countries get involved in trying to stop it? Or, you know, it's still going on today, isn't it? Is it still happening today? Yeah, it has uh, somewhat receded, but uh, countries do not be heavy seen. If you look at the world, I think other countries interfere when uh, you know when it's sort of too late, right. they did that in Bo in Bosnia. You know where wherever there has been, they did that in Africa. So when massacres take place after it's over and done with, that is when the states decide that it is time to intervene. So we this is a this is a problem with the world. <laughs> they do not. The states do not, because for several, whatever, they have their own geopolitical considerations or whatever you might call it, they, um, they do not interfere when perhaps there is a possibility of averting uh, lots of tragedies and brutalities. They do not intervene. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why maybe we make films, why we uh, because we want to generate some sort of an awareness so that uh, yeah. you know so, so, so that you touch an ethical core somewhere so that there is uh, you know states can respond in some way it is it's a very difficult situation yeah. it's very powerful film. what kind of harassment would people see now at the moment in what ways? I'm sure there is lots of ways. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe let me address it. You see, it's a phase. Kashmir is one of the most highly militarized zones. It's probably the highest militarized zone in the world. So when there is a tremendous amount of militarization, it is self-evident what can it result in. You know, you have seen the film. Yeah. 
you see what is happening. So it's uh, in a sense, it's uh, you know the answer is in your question itself. So this, uh, it's still the same. It's yeah, I mean there are times presence. it's off and on. Yeah. Militarization has not decreased in any way. But there are times when uh, repression is more, mm. and there are times when it is less. So it's, uh, you know, there's not like it is constant. There mm. have been times when it, there have been very, very severe repression. There have been times when it is lesser. So um, it's, but it is, it is cyclical. It mm. goes on. Uh, I would just like to clarify that one boy was killed yesterday in Kashmir. Maybe they may not be knowing about this because they were traveling. One boy was killed yesterday. And uh, before this, I think like there was, there were massive protests. You may be knowing about that way in Kashmir that time, in Bandipura. Yes. Again, two, two or three boys were shot, shot dead. And uh, one, more, one more boy was killed. I'm talking about, you know, just these are very, very recent incidents. That's yes. yesterday, the Bimna one. The Bimna one yesterday, yeah, of course, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A guy, and, uh, and uh, he was not, you know, he was in, he was not keeping well. He was having disease and illness, and he was shot dead, unfortunately. That, that's an everyday story in Kashmir. It's not an isolated incident. And, you know, after, we have become somehow immune to it, and some are so used to it that we think, okay, it's all right. So many atrocities, such huge atrocities. On which fronts are you finding some barriers to justice? Is it sort of across the board, whether that's the courts and, and sort of the local authorities, or is it just from the military? Are you saying that is this repression mm. just by the military? No, well, <clears throat> through some parts of the film there were sort of elements of justice where people were actually uh, that were being found and, and there are some sort of agencies involved who were actually trying to find some form of justice. Um, I'm sure to know what extent that is. Is that sort of just some few small groups that sort of pressurise local units into sort of giving information or is it sort of... Yeah, yeah. there have been... Uh, see, this has been, this is an ongoing process and uh, India is a democracy by its constitution and by its practice, supposedly. So there is, uh, uh, there have been times, you know, when there have been very, very high level of uh, protests and demonstrations, and there may have been some kind of responses by the state, uh, you know, agencies. A couple of times there have been instances where bodies have been exhumed and they have been uh, found to be local people who have been, you know, after maybe, uh, there are two instances here. In one instance, the bodies were exhumed after a year, and in the second instance, I think they were exhumed maybe after 29 or 30 days. But these are extremely rare cases, and um, those cases are, there have always been some sort of particular incident uh, which has triggered off that response, um, which is like, I think in one of the, the first case, there was a police officer who was partly responsible and his mobile phone was found, uh, but it's a, sort of a long story. But there are some instances where there have been sort of, but then, like in both these cases, there, has, there is no civil prosecution, no civil court can prosecute army um, personnel in uh, Kashmir because there is an act, um, it's called the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, which does not allow for prosecution of Indian armed forces uh, in any circumstance without the sanction of the central government. And to date there is no instance of a sanction having been given, though there are thousands and thousands of cases pending. Is the local police uh, protected in this act as well? Or is it no, just... the local police have local uh, um, laws under which they are prote uh, protected. They are not protected by the armed forces special powers. That's the central act and it applies to the army and the paramilitary. Uh, the police come under the, um, the local JNK State Act and they have their own laws <coughs> under which they are protected. But I'm assuming no one's actually been held to account for any disappearance. <coughs> 
uh, not for disappearances. We have no instance of a disappeared person having returned. Or as I said, there are some bodies which have been recovered. There are two instances here. There are few other instances where some bodies have been recovered. But there has been no prosecution till date. Is that just murdering people? It's just yes. You don't don't raise the fire. Um, I want to ask uh, the reality. It's great of <laughs> um, like in the film as well. There was what's the kind of proportion of people who were picked up in the villages? Could you tra can you translate for me? Okay. Compared to say that, you know, because there was a very strong rural element. It seemed. Of course, yeah. Of course. The man was <laughs> there. No, he just shahar bara mujhe pata laga hai.
very, very difficult, and villages particularly, it is very difficult. But within this 90 minutes, you have uh, covered so many aspects of what is happening there, which is, I think, a magnificent job in itself. You have in some very sensitive places like the military and all that. Have you ever been arrested yourself during making this uh, uh, film? Well, I think there was an instance in the film about those which have run the film Banana, Banana, to the arrests. उधर वापस आ गई तो एक औरत आ गई बोलता यूनिट देने काटा हमारे आर्मी ने तो खेती बाड़ी करेगा तो यूनिट ना पैसा देता ना कोई देता हम सीधे ही चलते हैं वो आर्मी वाले आ गए तो बोलता हमने शूटिंग किया हमारी काम में फिर इसको भी पकड़ लिया और उसके साथ एक ये कैमरा मैन है तो एक लड़का है तो इनको रखा उधर ही काम के अंदर ही हम और हार्डवेयर पर मैं रखा गाड़ी में आज बजे तक जब आप काम बुके या काम मेंशन किया फिर इनको ये बाहर में से ना कहीं इसको ले जा खाने में आगे एक गाड़ी पीछे बड़ी गाड़ी है तो फिर गया खाने में खाने में ऐसे जो ने बोला आज तुम्हारी दावत है मैंने मैं मैंने हाँ समझ लिया मैंने बोला दावत नहीं तुम बोलो ये आप गांजिस्तान के औरत के आगे इधर आपको नहीं चलेगी हम चार बार की जरूरत नहीं है फिर उन्होंने सारे कामों को इनफॉरमेशन दिया तो बहुत फोर्स आया बाहर बहुत फोर्स आया बाहर इसका कैमरा भी उठाया फिर उसको रियल ने कहा दो तीन के हमने इंटरजेंस वाले आए फोटो उठाए हमारी उनको भी भेजा बाहर में बहुत काम है उधर उनके ऊपर एक आशा है वही आ गए उसने देखा बाहर में बोला पांच छह बजे बुखारी ना खाया कुछ ना पिया छह बजे छोड़ा बोला जा आपने क्यों इनफॉरमेशन पहले किया मैंने बोला हम किस इनफॉरमेशन का ना बाहर में इनके साथ भी किया तो शी एक्सप्लेन द इंस्टेंट मेरे पास दो भी नया फायर है देर हैव बीन सेवरल इंस्टेंसेस वेर वी हैव बीन सॉर्ट ऑफ एंड ऑफ आई थिंक एस फिल्म मेकर्स जर्नलिस we learn how to negotiate through these things. But she's citing this instance which is there in the film where we had gone to a sort of one higher reach where we were shooting. And then uh, actually the villagers came there, they said that <coughs> our land has been completely taken over and we cannot, um, you know, they don't give us rent and uh, we cannot sow anything. They depend on that land for livelihood. So we were just talking to them and then, you know, we were surrounded actually by the army and they took us into the camp. Um, I was there, I had a camera person with me and there was another person. She was there and the lady in the car, in the film, Hajra, she was also there. They left them outside in the in the vehicle and, we, and then they just took us there and sort of almost for the entire day, this was in the early hours of the morning, Till about, I mean, eight, I don't even remember now. They just kept us there, and then at some odd hour of the evening, they told us uh, that we had to take you to the police station now. So, and I mean, it had it was a very scary experience. I've had many other experiences, but this was probably the scariest because it was unimaginable the amount of force that surrounded us. You know, there were these huge trucks and like these commandos who surrounded us as if they were some highly <laughs> sought after terrorists or whatever. Anyway, then they took us to the police station and they find, you know, then sort of by then, you, you know, again, you keep some networks there, so there's networks <coughs> a little bit, um, they got to 
know, and then I think they, they just released us, but they erased all our footage. So there have been several such instances, but I think these are parts of, part of this work. So we are prepared for it. Did you say on the film that you weren't allowed to protest in public places or something? Is that right? Were allowed? Were allowed to protest? Yeah, that was in the early days. It's very difficult to protest. I think this movement, the movement against disappearances, that they are, um, you know, uh, is the, one of the only movements in Kashmir that has been allowed to sustain somehow. They come out into the public space now, but in the early 90s they were not allowed to come out. So that's when they used to go to these shrines and, you know, some of these places to where they would gather and they used to go to the court inside the premises of the court and the shrines where they used to protest. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of their collective struggle. Now they come out in the, into right. a public park and they protest in public space. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My question is that in the protest, big gathering, they were chanting, Am Adadi Jate Ispar Mi Uspari. Do the people there think and feel the public across the uh, line of control have the same sort of treatment or um, do they think that the way they are being treated in the places which were shown in the film, are they, I mean, feeling that the same way is uh, the public treated in uh, AK? No, no, definitely not. They know it is not like, they are not, they know, Kashmir is a highly politicized, they know what is happening around. So obviously there is no such thing which is happening on there. There may be political repression on the other side, but there is not militarized repression in the kind that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So there is a political sort of uh, repression, but it is quite evident that that kind of military... Uh, I was just curious about what the public is No, no, there is, there is, you see, there are all kinds of people in Kashmir. I mean, there is, but Kashmiri is sort of uh, also, they know what is happening. So um, the, they, they, they know that there is no political kind of repression perhaps in um, AJK. But this kind of military oppression is not there. So they are quite clear about that. Is the film for sale? Nobody wants to buy it. Or calendars have a disappeared sketch of a disappeared person uh, on it uh, every month and these cards are also so if you want to write something or you know maybe uh, send a note to your local MP or whatever here uh, and, and this is the, the people who have invited us here is the University of Warwick and the University of Westminster and they are doing some sort of a research and they would like if you can just fill in that form for them. That would be Nine generation 
इनके साथ ही जुम्मन का ये होना चाहिए मैं एक माँ हूँ मैंने इतना लड़ाई पता नहीं कोई माँ क्या करे इसीलिए साठ की आवाज है क्यों किया हमारे साथ आठ साल का बेटा कौन सा मुझा है चौदह साल का बेटा कौन सा मुझा है सत्तर साल का बूढ़ा को कौन सा मुझा है इसलिए ये सच्चाई की लड़ाई ये कभी नहीं रुकी मैं भी लड़ाई है इसलिए शेयर करो हमारे साथ वो आगे बढ़ा बाकी आवाज है इतना आगे बढ़ाया उसने और भी आगे मैं अकेली नहीं हूँ आप इधर भी आए बहुत मिली हैं वो मेरे बैठे हैं अगर हमारी बैठे करी अगर आप मैंने कुछ नहीं किया मैं भी फिर कहना नहीं चाहती हूँ जबरदस्ती में ये देखती मेरे को रूम में बहुत आजाद
I don't think on the international level we have many people who are doing this. But, you know, earlier it, it used to be like, I'll, I'll put this question to both of them. And earlier we did not have anybody. It was largely an Indian narrative about Kashmir. You know, whatever used to come out of Delhi, it used to be considered as a narrative of Kashmir, which it was not. But of late, since the day in Kashmir, go back and tell us how you should behave, how you should now, how we'll give you more rights and stuff like that. But it's only after 2000 <coughs> people like Ifrit Patmaji and many others as well now have started, you know, some have started writing, some have started, you know, on international fora, people, Kashmiris are going out, they are going out, they are writing, they are propagating this message. And that's how now we are taking it forward, the younger generation. Okay, fine. We have to we have to leave the room. Yes. <laughs>